So always before we kept solving equations and like 2x plus 1 equals 0, we needed to move away from whole numbers. We had coefficients that were whole numbers, but the solutions weren't whole numbers anymore. And that kept happening as we went through this. But with complex numbers, you don't have to move away anymore. That's the end of the story. Moreover, if you want a system of numbers, some things like numbers, that behave in the friendly way that addition and multiplication and subtraction and division behave, the complex numbers is really the end of the road in a, in a reasonable sense. If you start with the real numbers and you want something a little bigger, which has these properties, and you get by adjoining some roots of equations, the complex numbers are where it's at. So you, they're closed in themselves. They're called an algebraically closed field because you can solve any polynomial with coefficients there in that same field. That's a very valuable thing. And they are the, really the fundamental connection between geometry and algebra. That's nice for mathematicians, but it also lends great power to geometry and to algebra. The information flows back and forth. And amazingly enough, complex numbers turn out to be the basis of physics, too. All of quantum mechanics depends on complex numbers. In some funny sense, the world seems to be more a complex number world than a real number world, even though it took humanity a long, long time to realize that. Do you think, do you think the name imaginary numbers is bad marketing, then? Because <laughs> everyone calls them imaginary, and that makes people think they don't really exist. Well, it's terrible marketing, and it comes from the time that people were really afraid to use them. Uh, there's, there's wonderful passages where people say, for example, if you want to solve the cubic equation, we know you can solve cubic equations, right? Because that's odd degree. But if you want to actually form the uh, formula for it, which people found in the 16th century, I think, then you have to use complex numbers. And they hated that. They said, well, this really doesn't mean anything, but it's a kind of useful device. This is an imaginary number. It isn't really there, but we'll use it just as a trick. And um, it took till Gauss till people said, no, 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 these are just points in the plane. It's perfectly simple. There's no mystery about an imaginary number. It's just another way of doing arithmetic. If complex num if, if mathematics went all this time without complex numbers being used, and mm -hmm. now you look back at, back at them and think, oh, I can't believe they ever went without it, <laughs> does that mean there could be classes of numbers or a whole class of mathematics out there that you guys don't know about? Oh, for sure. We, we discover new systems, new algebraic systems all the time, and some of them are very useful and appear in physics. And uh, I, uh, There are lots of, of new examples, vertex operator algebras, and all kinds of funny things are out there. Mathematicians love to invent new systems. It's easy to invent new systems. The trick is to invent a new system which is really useful and will really tie into a lot of other things. Uh, beyond complex numbers, Hamilton invented the quaternions, and there are attempts to use quaternions in physics, and there's the Cayley numbers beyond that. There are things called hypercomplex systems, which people play with, I play with, for example. Um, there's a lot out there, and you can look at rings of functions which have most of the properties of the complex numbers, but not all of them. So this is an industry, this, this invention business, and uh, we love it. <laughs>